the heart has a very limited capacity for regeneration after injury. And this is an increasing cause of uh, human uh, morbidity and mortality worldwide. There is a compelling unmet clinical need to identify the optimal cell type to drive robust cardiac muscle regeneration because this uh, recent uh, discovery actually um, is the latest uh, in a chain of scientific discoveries. And for the first time, it uh, reports uh, the identification of a cell that could be viewed as perhaps an optimal cell type to promote cardiac muscle uh, regeneration because the cells that have been isolated have come from embryonic stem cells and then have been used to form an intact strip of functioning ventricular muscle tissue. While you may start out with a very small number of cells, they have the capability to proliferate and then maintain their ability to make muscle. And it's that property that makes them very unique. We decided to ask the question, how is the heart built in the first place? If you want to rebuild a broken heart, then go back and look in nature and find out how it's done normally. So we went back to the embryo of mouse and we essentially color-coded the heart and were able to pick up very specific populations of heart cells which have these unique qualities of being able to replicate and at the same time being completely committed to the muscle cell fate. These cells turn out to have a built-in clock in them, meaning when we isolate them, they are capable of renewing for a while, but then after a certain period of time, they will stop renewing and they will mature into functioning myocardial tissue. These are stem cells that are actually differentiating in a test tube, and from them we're going to generate the heart tissue. And using these cells and the tissue engineering technology that was developed by Kit Parker and Adam Feinberg over in the School of Engineering, we were able to generate two-dimensional myocardial tissue out of that. Now to get to full cardiac regeneration, we need to get to the three dimensions. But already we've taken a huge step forward with respect to regenerating the heart. And we've developed a platform that will allow us to study how normal heart functions.